I'm really excited about being able to build the kitchen garden so close to the shed. Being able to come out in a matter of seconds and pick produce and then have it back into the kitchen and on people's plates is really important to me. So before I actually start designing my garden, I'm off to see Jordan Sly from Worm Ticklers, an organic seedling nursery. Because it will be an edible garden and the bees on my farm will be the primary pollinators, I want advice on the best way to create a chemically free garden and Jordan has loads of experience on how. Marty. Jordan, how are you going? Great, how are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Been ages. So I want to have a chemical free garden and I want to use organic seedlings. Is that the best approach? Really, you're getting a stronger product from start. So a stronger soil, a stronger seed. It's going to grow in season and be tastier at the end result. So definitely, yes. Okay, great. That Because that's something that I've really wondered about is, you know, what's the difference between yep. organic and a generic? So it th does confuse people. It's a sort of a slow release fertilizer or something synthetic in the soil to start with. This is a generic plant. Correct. Yep. And something else we use natural microisms that are living in the soil. So the plants are stronger to begin with. That's exactly right. So they are stronger to go through from the beginning and you know, but then you've still got to do the right thing. Oh, so going right back to the actual seed of the organic seedling. Exactly right. So it's it, been saved from a plant that's been grown organically. Okay, so that yep. is probably a good thing for people to know as well. Number one. Because the seed is actually very strong. Yep. Yeah. Great. The seed is the plant, so that's exactly right. But also you've got to do the right thing at home and then not treat that with chemical fertilizers and that sort of stuff, which is all based on your soil, your worms and your natural habitat. What's the difference between chemical free and organic? Uh, basically not using a synthetic fertiliser or something that's made out of the baddies on your stuff at home, in your pots, in your veggie patch, and which stays in the soil and also affects bees. And there is lots of that on the market anyway. That's so. right, it's becoming more and more popular and people yeah. who want to take the time to grow food and eat food mm -hmm. generally want to have something that's not ridden with chemicals. These look amazing. What are, what are these here? Thanks, Marty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got some uh, chamomile here, actually. So we, these actually are in the companion plant area. Okay, here, great. So things that bring in good bugs and stuff to the garden. I really need to learn more about companion planting. That's when you put plants like marigolds, nasturtiums, and chamomile next to your herbs and veg to increase biodiversity and ward off unwanted insects naturally without the need for chemicals. These are marigolds. Correct. Some marigolds. The chamomile, these yep. are a cosmos, uh, very pretty, most of them all edible as well. Lovely in big pots around your veggie patch and around your garden. Again, encouraging good bugs in, yep. rather than uh, and, and deterring the bad guy. So you're really being able to talk to people about uh, the companion planting because a lot of people don't really know much about that. Well, that's right, and we really want gardens to be, to be spray free, understand what a sort of whole ecosystem is about, yep. and uh, look after the good guys and, uh, and have a flourishing garden at the same time. Is it, would it be better for me to have a whole bed of uh, like flowers or how, how well, does that work? Look, I reckon uh, companion plants are beautiful in pots. You can move them around if, if they're small enough, but they also you know, cascade down very pretty yeah. and they're not, they're not taking over your growing space. So you can grow your food there, have your pots separately. Most of them are all edible flowers anyway. And yeah, the pollination is important and looking after your good insects at the same time. <laughs> should talk about your garden. Yeah, so I'm interested in obviously getting these companion plants. So I've got a few here already. Mm -hmm. And then obviously I'm gonna probably take full trays to plant out as well. Definitely, so I, I would, would also always encourage people to keep things simple, depending on what scale, that's definitely for a kitchen garden. Yeah. So really pick those four or five things that you use a lot of yeah. and mass plant those. And then of course mass plant the soft herbs that you love. You like salsa verde, we'll put in a whole stack of parsley. Yeah. I know you've got a few things going already, your, your harder perennial rosemaries and stuff. So yeah, soft, you know, chards, kales, rockets, and herbs. Okay, great. That's what I really want. And that's what I'm very interested in. Great, yeah. perfect. Easy done. Cool. So Jordan, I also want to sort of pick your brain about the physical design of the garden. Yep. And have you got any tips for me before we put it in? Sure, well before we definitely love to have a look and uh, help out, but really aspect is crucial. Obviously where your sun is, where your wind is, and, uh, and thinking about water. Yeah. And then from there on, just have a clear idea again of what you want to achieve. Yeah. And work around that with, uh, with, with everything else that's mentioned, companion plants and access. Yeah, because I have an idea of where I want it to be, yep. but I think I just need some expert advice that that would be the perfect place. Right. But I need to ask you one more favour. Yes, yes. I've got my friend Simon from Hawkesbury Native Landscapes coming and he's going to help 
design the garden and put it in. I would like you to be there on the day, um, just so we can nail everything in one go, so I know that I'll have the perfect kitchen garden. I'd love to, mate, that'd be great. Thank <laughs> you.